You said higher saturated fats result in more cholesterol in the blood, and that directly causes more amyloid plaques to form. So by lowering the saturated fat, we reduce the amyloid plaques forming. Anything else you want to expand on in more detail on, on yes, what Yes, this is a is? different topic than I, we were just talking about. We're talking about raising cholesterol and plaque in the arteries that contributed to microstrokes and larger strokes and heart attacks, but this is something different. When your cholesterol is high, you're also building more of these beta secretase and gamma secretase enzymes that actually form the amyloid plaque in the brain, the senile plaques, the Alzheimer's plaque. So by keeping your cholesterol low, you also are lowering the production of these plaques. So you see we're working on different ways, natural, safe ways, and the side effect of lowering saturated fat and cholesterol in the blood, of course, are less risk of heart attack, strokes, diabetes, and many other problems. Please tell us more about the studies you've used that showed ginkgo biloba improved co cognition and helped in delaying the onset of Alzheimer's. Well, I'll answer this one. Uh, there was a recent study, 2019, and it was an expert consensus panel all over the world. And they got together and they studied the standardized extract of ginkgo biloba, which is what we used in the trial. The one they studied is identical to the one we used in the trial. And they found that this ginkgo biloba standardized extract was the only thing that helped with both vascular dementia and Alzheimer's dementia and was the only thing that helped with the activities of daily living in those with moderate or advanced Alzheimer's disease who were having problems with this. So this was a very good study that confirmed once and for all that there are some very good effects from this. Now, I do want to mention a possible drug interaction with ginkgo biloba. It does tend to thin your blood. And by thinning your blood, it gets the blood to go into the arterioles and capillaries in the brain and penetrate so that you do think better. It's, it's used all over the world for students who want to do better on exams, for people who want to think clearly. However, since it does thin your blood a little bit, it should not be used with existing blood thinners whether it's warfarin, coumadin, or Pradaxa, Xeralto, Eliquis, any of the blood thinners should not be used concurrently with it. However, in our study, we did uh, confirm that the 81 milligrams of aspirin did not conflict with taking the, and we passed that through the university internal review board as being a safe combination. You said that the gold standard for medical studies is the double-blind, randomized, placebo-controlled clinical trial and that nine of these gold-plated studies showed that ginkgo biloba delayed and treated Alzheimer's disease. How many doctors in America prescribe ginkgo biloba for dementia? Why don't doctors know about this or prescribe this? Would people do better if they combine ginkgo with pharmaceutical drugs made for dementia? Well, I think the answer is pretty clear that doctors in America do not prescribe uh, any kind of medical plants. However, in Europe, they do. Medical doctors prescribe medical plants in Europe. Most other countries. Most other countries, China, India, many of the advanced countries in the world do use plants because in general, they can be said to be a little safer than drugs. However, they are less profitable. So I think that some of the reasons that doctors don't use ginkgo biloba is they're not trained in medical plants in school. They are not constantly told about them by drug reps, which they are, of course, by, about all the drugs. And I think the doctors rightly say that herbal medicine is unreliable because you don't know what's in the capsule. Maybe it's the plant you want, maybe it's not. That's why we use standardized extracts. Because for instance, with ginkgo, the ginkgo flavone glycosides are guaranteed to be 24%. The terpene lactones have to be 6%. And the undesirable ginkolic acid has to be under 1% of these so that you know exactly what you're getting in every single one. And I think that if American medical doctors studied this more carefully, looked at the randomized controlled trials, that they would be convinced that this would be helpful. And yet, they still would not be able to prescribe it because it's not FDA approved in America to use for this condition. And they could be sued for malpractice or something. When donapezil is used for memory concurrently with ginkgo biloba, they're finding that there's an 11% improvement in memory and thinking. When donapezil is used without gotocola, there's a slow decline. So the two can be used together. And 
it would be nice if American neurologists would learn about this and perhaps use them together for those not on blood thinners, of course. Can GOTO COLA really help with Alzheimer's? It's a lovely plant. It's been used for yeah, centuries. We grow it. Yeah, it actually grows on our farm. And it's uh, been used for centuries in East India. The plant seems to be very safe with no safety concerns or drug interactions. I do only use safe solutions. It has been shown to improve the thinking, especially of older adults without dementia. And so this would be something that people can consider before they're starting to get memory loss. Also, it's used for those with Alzheimer's disease. It's neuroprotective, it's antioxidant, and the side effects are not adverse, they're good. A little lower blood pressure, a little better appetite, better sleeping. So it seems like a safe, natural way to combat age-related decline in thinking and memory. And the nervous system calms down a little from it too also. Can you tell us a little bit more about uh, SAMe, uh, the scientific word it stands for, uh, and, and does it decrease uh, amyloid beta production, thus preventing Alzheimer's disease? Are there studies supporting this? There certainly are studies recording this, and very recent ones, and uh, older ones too. S-adenosylmethionine is the long way to say it. It's term SAMe in the popular literature, and if you went to a store to buy it, it would be called SAMe. SAM small e. However, in the technical medical literature, it's just SAM. It's the abbreviation for it if you read a study. It does indeed methylate or quench the production of beta and gamma secretase enzymes, thus quenching the production of amyloid plaque in the human body. And one study then said, quote, thus preventing Alzheimer's disease, end quote. I believe a proper quote would be thus preventing the buildup of Alzheimer's plaques. Should people be taking SAMe? Is it natural or a drug? Because of the usefulness of it, I think it would be good to take it. Now, we can produce our own SAMe in the body with the vitamin B12 and the folate. So what we want to do is produce, produce it in our own bodies. And for that, vitamin B12 and folate are helpful in producing the SAMe. Now, SAMe is pretty interesting stuff because it has been used for knee osteoarthritis, and it was found to be as effective for the pain of knee osteoarthritis as Celebrex, a very powerful painkiller, but it didn't just hide the pain, it helped to keep the cartilage healthy. And as I mentioned, it's used for, as an antidepressant, so you can't use it with other psychoactive medications. Now, people may need to take vitamin B12 supplementary to produce their own SAMe in the body. Absolutely, good and point. And even uh, plant-based food eaters do not get vitamin B12 in their diet. And a lot of meat eaters could benefit from taking extra B12. Well, they, they get it from the food, but they can't absorb it because the intrinsic factor is often blocked from the same cells that make stomach acid, the parietal cells.